Joshua chapter 1. Let's all stand in honor of the Word of God. Amen. And you got to love the Bible. I love the Bible because it has the answers. <laughs> Amen. If I don't know what to do, uh, God gives me His Word and I can find it. Amen. Joshua chapter 1. We're going to read verse 1. The Bible says, Now after the death of Moses, the servant of the Lord, it came to pass that the Lord spake unto Joshua, the son of Nun. He wasn't a Catholic, by the way. Joshua, the son of Nun, Moses' minister, saying, I'm going to preach to you today. Moses is dead. Now what? Moses is dead. Now what? Let's pray. Heavenly Father, we love you. Thank you for the wonderful day that you've given to us. Thank you, Lord, for the opportunity to meet in the house of God. Lord, we thank you, Lord, that we can come in America freely still and come to the house of God and not worry about being punished, not worry about, Lord, uh, Lord, what may happen to our lives. Lord, as I saw a picture this last week of somebody whose hands were cut because they had a Bible. God, thank you that we can still, Lord, come in America and read God's Word and hear the Word of God preached. And, Lord, how much we take, uh, Lord, for granted. God, may we not take it for granted, and may you speak to our hearts. May we be humble tonight and be willing to yield to the Holy Spirit of God, whatever, God, you have a work to do in our hearts. Lord, I pray that you'd use me. Holy Spirit, I know I don't deserve to be yield, uh, used. I, don't know I, don't, I know I don't deserve to be here behind this pulpit. Uh, but, Lord, thank you that you give me an opportunity to serve. Somebody's got to do it. Somebody's got to preach. And, God, if you'll use me, I'll sure do my best. And I thank you, Lord, for that and ask that you would bless the message tonight. Bless those that hear it. May, Lord, it be mingled with faith and the decision be made. Lord, as I draw a line in the sand, Lord, may there be a decision that's made in the hearts of every believer here tonight. Somebody's here, Lord, they don't know that if they died, they'd go to heaven. Holy Spirit, the greatest work that could ever be done is that they would come and be saved. Lord, I can't do that. Only you can. I ask that you bless tonight. We love you and thank you in Jesus' name. Amen. You may be seated. Go back with me, if you will, in this story and try to imagine the children of Israel at this time. You go to Deuteronomy 34, just up, should be the page over. And, Moses, and it says, verse 1, And Moses went up from the plains of Moab unto the mountains of Nebo to the top of Pisgah that is over against Jericho. And the Lord showed him all the land of Gilead unto Dan, and all Naphtali, and the land of Ephraim, and Manasseh, and the land of Judah, unto the, uttermo, unto the utmost sea, and the south, and the plain of the valley of Jericho, the city of palm trees, unto Zoar. And the Lord said unto him, This is the land which I swear unto Abraham, unto Isaac, and unto Jacob, saying, I will give it unto thy seed. I have caused thee to see it with thine eyes but thou shalt not go over thither. So Moses, the servant of the Lord, died there in the land of Moab, according to the word of the Lord. And he buried him in a valley in the land of Moab, over against Beth Peor, but no man knoweth of his sepulcher unto this day. And Moses was an hundred and twenty years old when he died. His eye was not dim, nor his natural force evaded. And the children of Israel wept for Moses in the plains of Moab thirty days. So the days of weeping and mourning for Moses were ended. And Joshua the son of Nun was full of the spirit of wisdom, for Moses had laid his hands upon him, and the children of Israel hearkened unto him and did as the Lord commanded Moses. And there arose not a prophet since in Israel like unto Moses, whom the Lord knew face to face, in all the signs and the wonders which the Lord sent him to do in the land of Egypt to Pharaoh, and to all his servants, and to all his land, and in all that mighty hand, and all the great terror which Moses showed in the sight of all Israel. Can you see the children of Israel as they watch Moses go up to the mountain of Nebo, to the top of Pisgah, for the last time? Because the Bible says that Moses died there and God buried him. They never saw him again. God took care of Moses and no man knows where Moses was buried. They've tried to find it. They've tried to search in Israel. It's a big thing, but no man knows. But now Moses is dead. I couldn't imagine being Moses and God letting me see the land of Canaan and then tell me I, I won't need to go over. He's led the children of Israel so far and done so much for God and God telling him that he wouldn't be able to see it. And of course, it was his fault. 
but he died there. Now the children of Israel don't know what to do. Moses is gone. Moses is dead. Their leader, the man that had done so much, the man that brought the ten plagues, the man who split the Red Sea. And by the way, God did that, but he used Moses, a leader, somebody they looked to, an introvert, a meek man. The Bible says the meekest man that there ever was. But God, you, but God used him. Now the children of Israel don't know what to do. A question mark is placed on their lives. Have you ever been there? When a leader that has led you for so long is gone? Or maybe they passed off the scene. You're left standing wanting to know, what do I do next? They wept for 30 days, the Bible says. They wept for 30 days for this man that led them out of Egypt. What now? As they sit in mourning and weeping and ashes, what do we do? Where do we go? All the dreams that they had that God would do with them through Moses are now gone. But you know, God has a plan. God always has a plan. And that's why you got to love God. <laughs> Because in the midst of darkness and question, one young man named Joshua rises from the ashes. One young man that had the spirit of wisdom got a hold of an almighty God for the answer. Before we find that answer, I'd like to look at Joshua really quick. Why God used Joshua? Turn your Bible, Exodus chapter 24, 24, verse number 13. You know, God wants to use us tonight. God wants us to serve Him, and God wants us to be the next leaders for this next generation. And I'd like to look at Joshua, Exodus 24, verse number 13. It says, And Moses rose up, and his minister, Joshua, Moses went up into the mount of God. Joshua was J Mo Moses' minister. He was a servant. You know, and God wants servants. I'm convinced the more and more that I serve God that leaders are not leaders that are not born leaders. They're born servants. Joshua was a minister. He learned how to serve under a great under a great man named Moses. And if we want to be leaders, if we want to make ourselves available for God, I believe that we need to, first of all, be servants. We need to be a servant to God. Be a servant to the, the leaders that we have. Be a servant where God has us now. Exodus chapter 17, verse number 10. Exodus chapter 17, verse number 10. It says, So Joshua did. As Moses had said to him, and fought with Amalek, and Moses, Aaron, and Hur went up to the top of the hill. Joshua not only was a servant, but he was an obedient servant. Amen. There's lots of servants, but there's not a lot of obedient servants. Amen. God wants obedient servants tonight. Are you obedient to God? Are you obedient to His will? Have you given your life to God to serve Him? All right, now are you obedient? Are you willing to do whatever God asks you? Are you willing to do whatever the man of God would ask you to do. See, God doesn't just want a servant. God wants an obedient servant. Somebody that's ready to step in and say, I'll do it for God. Somebody that's willing to obey. Amen. Somebody willing to step in and say, God, whatever you'd have me to do, I'll do it. Lots of times we want to get all the blessings that God has, but we don't want to have to serve God to get it. But God needs servants. Boy, there's a lost world out there, and God needs somebody to serve. We've got to be obedient. A good illustration is simply soul winning. Amen. There's a lost world. We're all servants. But have you obeyed this last week? Have you gone? The Bible says, go into all the world, preach the gospel. Have you obeyed? It's easy to be the servant, but have you obeyed? Next, about Joshua, Exodus 17, verse number 13. Verse number 13, it says, And Joshua discomfited Amalek and his people with the edge of the sword. I believe Joshua was a fighting servant. You know, Joshua wasn't afraid to get in the battle. Amen. He fought with Amalek. Amalek in the Bible is a type of the flesh. 
He fought with him. He fought with the flesh. He fought with the devil. He fought with anybody opposite of God. Amen. He was willing to get in and get in the fight. You know, we're servants for God, but it's going to be a battle. Amen. It's an all uphill battle. Amen. The Bible says that the gates of hell shall not prevail against it, but the gates of hell are still going to come at us. Amen. And we're going to have to learn to fight for God. We're going to have to learn to stand firm for God. We're going to have to learn to not let the world try to push their agenda on our family and on our children. Amen. We're going to have to fight for what we believe. God needs servants, but he needs fighting servants. I believe in fighting. Amen. Now, I don't believe we ought to go and try to you know, start battles and start man, all this nonsense. I'm not talking about that, but I'm talking about when it comes to standing for the word of God battling for the King James Bible, battling for the doctrine and for and giving the lost and, and, and preaching the word of God. We've got to be willing to get out there and fight. Too many Christians are willing to just be run over by the world. Boy, it's sad as I watch as people just give in to fads. Christians just give in to whatever comes along. Whatever is, is okay. We don't want to hurt anybody. Now it's time to get up and fight for what we believe. Amen. America doesn't have revival. You know why? Because we've let the devil push us over. We've not stood firm. We've turned our backs on God. We've turned our back. We've got the armor on, but we've turned our back and, put, and exposed the weak point. Because we're not willing to stand up and fight for nothing. Amen. There's no grit anymore. Boy, is that true in today's generation. Walk by and all these uh, teenagers, hats backwards. Pants low, be bopping. Forgive me, Lord. But you know what? They look cool, but there's no backbone. There's no grit. And God needs some servants that got some grit about them. That when God says, get in the fight, we're willing to do it. Amen. I believe in fighting for what I believe. I believe in not giving up ground. I believe in not letting Josephine Olstein and, and, and Dr. Phil and all them tell me what I will and won't preach. Amen. I believe in fighting for what's in the blessed old book. Amen. He was a fighting servant. Exodus chapter 33, verse number 11. And the Lord spake unto Moses face to face as a man speaketh unto his friend. And he turned again into the camp, but his servant Joshua, the son of Nun, a young man, departed not out of the tabernacle. I believe Joshua was a spiritual servant. Boy, Joshua, when he saw how Moses could get a hold of an almighty God, and he saw Moses speak face to face with God, he said, boy, I want that. He said, man, I'd like to get a hold of God like that. Would there be today a servant that would see the man of God and see the work that's done and say, boy, I want that. Would there be somebody with a desire in their heart to see God do an amazing work? To get a hold of God on their knees in prayer? Boy, it's lost today for people to get a hold of God. Boy, we think that God just meets with us on Sunday morning, Sunday night, and Wednesday night, and that's it. But no, may, may I tell you, God wants to meet with you every single day and give you the truths of God's Word and use you and fill you with His Holy Spirit. But today, we want to find something else to do with our time. We want to watch the TV. We want to play our games. And again, not that I'm against having times for that, but if we're going to forsake being spiritual and getting in our Bibles and praying to an almighty God, then fooey with everything else. God needs spiritual servants. God needs spiritual people that are not going to be hypocritical. That are not going to tip their hat to God on Sunday and turn their back on God on Monday. God wants somebody that's going to get a hold of Him. That's going to beg for His power. That's going to try to reach people. That's going to try to lead people. God wants somebody today that will get a hold of him like Moses did. Boy, it ought to burn in you. If you're born again, it ought to burn in your soul to want to know God. I know it does mine. I see the work that my dad did, and I remember as a young man thinking, man, I'd like to do that. You see what great men of God do, and, and not that I'm after a building, and not that I'm after great numbers, but I want to see God use me. 
with Numbers chapter 11, verse 28. It says, And Joshua the son of Nun, the servant of Moses, one of his young men, answered and said, My Lord, Moses, forbid them. Moses said unto him, Envious thou for my sake? Would God that all the Lord's people were prophets and that the Lord would put his spirit upon them. Joshua here was taught something by Moses. He wanted Moses to do one thing and Moses told him no. He said, leave it alone. I believe Joshua was a learning servant. He wasn't too proud to learn from the man of God. We have to remember as Christians, we can't be too proud to learn from the men of God. God's given us great men with great wisdom. We can't be too proud to humble ourselves and say, you know what, you're right. You're the man of God. You're the authority. Now, what was the answer God gave Joshua? Joshua rose up. The people are waiting. Moses is dead. And that was all preliminary. This is where the message gets good. Amen. So I hope you buckle your seatbelts, put on your asbestos suit or whatever you got, because... It's getting hot, amen. What did God give the people? What was the answer? And I love it. Joshua chapter 1. Now after the death of Moses, the servant of the Lord, it came to pass that the Lord spake unto Joshua, the son of Nun, Moses' minister, saying, Moses, my servant is dead. Well, that's obvious. He didn't come back. But I believe he had to make it known because they didn't know where Moses went. He's gone. So God said, hey, Moses is dead. What? Now, therefore, arise. Been weeping 30 days. God comes to Joshua and says, look, he's dead. He's gone. That's great. You've mourned. Take your time. You've you've mourned a little. You've cried. Now it's time to get up. Amen. Time to get up. Time to arise. Time to stop mourning and time to get get doing something for God. Amen. He says, time to be done sitting. Time to get up and start serving. You can't stay down and mourn for the past. He says, get up, move on to the future, amen. We have to make a decision in our lives to get up and get back to the service of God. Let's get back to winning souls to Jesus. Let's get busy loving people. Let's get busy running the buses. Let's get busy serving God and making a difference in this old world. Jesus is coming, and we don't have time to mourn over Moses. Moses may be dead, but God isn't, amen. I love that. That was I put that in big, bold letters. That's my new motto. Moses may be dead, but God isn't. Amen. They were sitting around going, oh, God, what are we going to do? And God comes to Joshua and says, hey, get up. Arise. Let's go. Moses didn't split the Red Sea. I did. Moses didn't bring ten plagues. I did. Moses didn't do and deliver you out of the hand of Pharaoh. I did. And I'm not dead. Amen. Moses may be gone, but I'm still here. Amen. Time for us to get up. And do something for God. Amen. We can't sit down. We can't sulk. Amen. God doesn't give a Christianity where we sit and pity ourselves. God's type of Christianity is get up and walk on by faith. Amen. Amen. Number two, he said, be strong. Look there, verse number six. He says, be strong. Be firm. Be secure. Prevail. Stand firm in God and in the power of God of his might. He tells you number one, he tells us number one, we need to get up and serve him, but now we've got to be strong. Because we've got battles ahead we're gonna face. We've got trials ahead that are coming after us and it's gonna be a tough battle, but it's worth it, but we've got to stay strong in what God has for us. Look Ephesians chapter six, verse number ten. Ephesians chapter six, verse number ten. I can turn there faster. Here we go. That's in the old testament. Ephesians chapter six, verse number ten. Just kidding. The Bible says, Finally, finally, my brethren, be strong in the Lord and in the power of His might. That's what makes the difference. We can be strong, but it's got to be in God's power. It's got to be in His might that we do the work of God. We can conquer Canaan. We can go get done what God has for us, the goals that God has in store, but we can only do it in the power of His might. Amen. But that's what gives us strength, is God's power. Amen? We don't have to worry about doing it by ourselves. We're not in this battle alone. 
we have God on our side so we can stand firm, stand tall and be strong because God's power can conquer. Amen. We can't do the work without God. We need Him. We need to go forward, be strong, well exercised, well fit in God's armor. Amen. We've got battles to face. But also, 2 Timothy 2.1 is another verse where it says to be strong in the grace that is in Christ Jesus. But I want to point this verse out to you. 1 John chapter 2, verse number 14. 1 John 2, verse number 14. I love this verse. This will put you in a shouting fit. It says, I have written unto you, fathers, because ye have known him that is from the beginning. I have written unto you, young men, because ye are strong. How do you be strong? And the word of God abideth in you. Boy, you want to be strong in the power of his might? Get to know the book. Get to know God's word. The more of God's word you get involved in your life, the stronger you find you'll be. You won't be tossed about with every wind of doctrine. You'll be strong because you've got the word of God abiding on the inside. Amen. The devil can't shake you because you've got God's promise in your soul. Amen. This is true of Joshua, because look, Joshua 1.8. This book of the law shall not depart out of thy mouth, but thou shalt meditate therein day and night, that thou mayest observe to do according to all that is written therein. For then thou shalt make thy way prosperous, and then thou shalt have good success. Joshua learned at a young age and as a young leader that to get a hold of God's word and not let the law of the Lord depart out of his mouth, he was strong. God says, be strong. Number three, God says, be courageous. Be strong and of good courage. And, or, and of a good courage. It takes courage to do something for God. It takes boldness to witness and give the gospel. It takes courage to step out by faith when everything else seems un, unsure. It takes courage to make a step of faith and follow God's leading when you're not exactly sure of the future. But that courage comes... From God's promises. Look here. Verse number 7. Only be thou strong and very courageous, that thou mayest observe to do according to all the law which Moses my servant commanded thee. Turn not, oh, sorry, wrong verse. Uh, verse number 5, I'm sorry. There shall not any man be able to stand before thee all the days of thy life. Why? As I was with Moses, so I will be with thee. Boy, courage comes from knowing God's promises from knowing that God says, just like I was with Moses, I'll be with you. Boy, you can step out by faith. You can claim the promises in God's Word. You know why? Because just like God has kept His promises to everybody else, God will keep His promises to you. Just like God has kept His promise to Paul the Apostle and Peter, God will keep His promises to you. Boy, that's good. You can have courage to move forward because God will keep his promise. God will be with you. What did Jesus tell his disciple? He said, go ye into all the world and preach the gospel to every creature. Why? He says, I will be with you always, even unto the end of the world. Amen. Jesus is with us. Amen. We're not a religion based on fear. We're a religion based on hope. And that hope comes from Jesus Christ. Being on the inside, somebody say amen. Amen. <laughs> amen. God will be with you. Step out by faith. Claim God's promise. Be courageous. Be, have courage. And it says, and I love it, it says, of a good courage. Boy, it's a good courage to take out and take God at his word. Step out by faith. Amen. This world is for, full of courage to do the wrong thing. Sure, this, everybody's got courage to be a daredevil and do Everything else God says not to do. How about somebody get up some good courage to do something for God? Then number four, what did God tell the people? He said, number one, arise. Get up. Do something. Don't sit there. Don't soak. Time to do something for God. Then he said, be strong. Be courageous. But then we go down to verse eight. This book of the law shall not depart out of thy mouth. I called it... I. And I should have said before, and I didn't. The ABCs to success. Arise, be strong, courageous, and don't depart from the book. Boy, you can put your money down on this. 
You stay close to God's word, and everything will be just fine. God told jo Joshua, I'll tell you what you do. You stay as close to this blessed old black book, and you observe to do all the law. You look there, he said, verse number 7, Only be thou strong and very courageous, that thou mayest observe to do according to all the law. You observe to do all that's in there, and you'll be just fine. Can I make a statement tonight? You obey God's word, and everything will be just fine. <laughs> you do what God tells you to do, and everything will be okay. Amen. Sometimes we worry, well, what am I going to do? I just don't know. Let me give you the answer. Just obey God's word. The future doesn't look good, preacher. What do I do? Obey the Bible. I don't have all the answers, but God does. I don't know what to do, so obey the Bible. Find out, amen. Whether you're a man of low degree or of high estate, you're not exempt from living by this book. And you're not exempt from the promises that are in here. The old King James Bible never fails. If it fails you, you'll be the first one. And you won't be the first one. Amen. Don't depart from the book. Too many churches today cut out the Bible. They cut out using God's Word. The schools cut out God's Word. Look what happened to them. I heard a statement. They said, the schools don't want it, but the prisons do. Maybe if the schools wanted it, you wouldn't have to worry about the prison. How true is that? That if you'd get God's Word early, you wouldn't have to worry about it down the road. God will work it out. God will take care of you. Just obey God. Take Him at His Word. If God makes you a promise and you can find it in the Bible, you can put money down that God will take care of it. God will take care of you. Then look here, verse number 10. Then Joshua commanded the officers of the people, saying, He's done. God's done. He's, I'm sorry, verse 8. Have not I commanded thee, be strong and of a good courage, be not afraid, neither be thou dismayed, for the Lord thy God is with thee, whithersoever thou goest. Now God's done. God said everything he wanted now in nine verses. So then, what's Joshua do? Well, I think we might be able to go forward. Yeah, maybe. Well, what do you guys think we should do? <laughs> no. He, pat, he, says, he tells the officers, pass through the host. Command the people, saying, prepare you victuals. For within three days, ye shall pass over this Jordan, to go in to possess the land which the Lord your God giveth you to possess it. Boy, I love Joshua's courage. He says, all right, God, he told me what to do. Fellas, let's get on the ball. Go tell everybody in three days we're leaving, we're going over, and we're taking that old Canaan land. Amen. He says, we don't need Moses. Moses was a good guy. We appreciate all that he did, but God's going to get us through. Amen. God told us to go. Let's go. Amen. Reminds me when Joshua and Caleb went over to the Canaan land, and they said, come on, let's take it. He's been waiting this long, and he said, you know what? Now God's given me an even greater promise. He said, just like I was with Moses, I'll be with you. He said, don't depart from the book. Thou shalt make thy way prosperous, and then thou shalt have good success. So he says, let's get up. Let's go do something for God. Amen. Amen. Boy, that make, it should make you excited when God gives you a promise. Then you ought to get up and say, hey, let's not delay. Let's not sit down. Get you your victuals. Get you your food. Get ready to go. Prepare whatever you need because we're going over. Amen. Boy, I love that. God has land. He has territory that he wants you to conquer in your life. He wants you to move forward and do more. Just take him at his promise and get up and do it. Amen. That's all God's waiting on. God's just waiting on some Christians to get off their rear end, get off their hiney, and say, you know what, time we better do something, I guess. God told us we could do it. Amen. God's kept his promise. God's kept his part. All he's waiting on is a bunch of lazy Christians like us to get up and say, all right, God, here we are. Let's do it. Amen. Don't be like in verse 18. It says, whosoever he be that doth rebel against thy commandment will not hearken unto thy words, and all that thou commandest him, he shall be put to death. 
Only be strong and have a good courage. Don't rebel, amen. Don't be that one that says, no, I don't think God can do it. No, we better not. Be careful. Don't step out by faith. Don't follow that old book. Be reasonable. No, don't be that kind of a Christian. Be the kind of a person that gets your family on track and says, you know what? God said we can. Let's do it, amen. Take God at his word, amen. Nobody that's ever trusted God has ever gone wrong. You find me somebody that's ever trusted God and gone wrong. But I can find you a million people that have trusted this old world. And what do they do? They end up turning to God. I can find you a million people that have turned to drugs. And now they don't know what to do. I can find you a million people turned to alcohol. Turned to music. Turned to the devil. And every time they come back into a church and say, I need help. But I've never found somebody that's ever took God at His word and trusted God by faith that's ever lacked. Amen. I've never found somebody that's ever trusted the Lord and followed God that's ever gone wrong. Amen. You can do it. We can go forward. We can trust the Lord. We can take God at His word. And God will be with us just like He was with Moses. Moses is dead. Now what? Maybe in your life, it seems like it's over. What do I do from here? Where do I go? Well, don't sit down. Don't sulk. Get up. Do something for God. Be strong. Be courageous. Don't depart from the book. And you take God at His promise and watch God bless your life. I love how he says, Then thou shalt make thy way prosperous, and then thou shalt have good success. I want to be a successful Christian. I want to be a successful individual. You take these ABCs that I call it, you take those and you apply those to your life, and I promise you, you'll be successful. Amen. I promise you, God won't go wrong. I dare you. I put out a dare to you. I double dog dare you. Now that, is a big deal right there. Double dog dare you to take God at His word and trust Him. And you watch God do amazing work. Let's pray. Heavenly Father, Lord, we sure do love you.